Welcome back, another lesson of Music Com Academy. Today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna finish off the series that we've been doing on categories and hot clocks, and I'm not gonna actually make any hot clocks. I'm just gonna talk through with you different day parts and how you could think about them because there's a hundred different ways of doing every single day part. So I'll just talk that through. And also just some random thoughts that I think you should know as a PD. So let's get to the lesson. <laughs> Hey Buckaroos, welcome back to another lesson of Music Com Academy. I'd like to start with this because, uh, you know, it just, just makes me feel awesome uh, because I got this letter from a guy named Dimitri and uh, he is in South Africa in Cape Town. And if you take a look, this is what his email said, um, you know, which is the entire purpose of the course. And it's also one of the reasons why I, I, I find it hard, but I keep trying to do it to make the transition from, okay, you don't know anything about programming to, okay, you are programming now, and I want to try to download some stuff to you that you probably have not seen because that's how you learn from different experiences, really. Uh, and everybody has different experiences. I'm sure I could learn a ton from different people who've been in different markets and, you know, and have seen things that I've never seen and actually had to think it through and decide what they were going to do. So, um, so there's that, okay? So I'm gonna to try to touch on some of those. And uh, one final thing, if you have a question, um, you know, if you have some questions or you'd like me to talk through something that you're dealing with, um, I would like to do that. It would be kind of cool. Just send me an email, um, pat at musicomacademy.com. Send me, you know, an email and just say, hey, can you talk about whatever it is? And I, I'll try to put three or four of them together and actually make a lesson out of it. And I'll let you know what lesson that's going to be. I'll send you back and like, hey, I'm going to do it in lesson 42, whatever, that kind of stuff. So um, let's finish off categories and hot clocks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking through with you just things. I'm not going to be making clocks, as I mentioned. I'm going to talk through things that are going to come up when you go through different tape parts. And let's start with an easy day part, which is going to be midday. Midday, generally speaking, you know, you have to start considering that you're going to want, even if you're a CHR, you're going to want office listening, okay? You know, somebody in an office, and not literally like a dentist office, but just they're at work in some way, because it could be, their office could be up on a roof because they're construction workers. And you might want to take that into consideration if you're a rock station. Um, I know when we were doing a rock station in Calgary, you could go out during the summertime, turn the radio off in your car if you were in you know, one of those uh, situations where th there's a new housing development going up and there's a whole bunch of uh, construction guys up on roofs or in the thing, you, you didn't even need to have the radio on. You could just drive through the construction site through the new subdivision and you could listen to the radio station because on all, all the radios on all the roofs and inside the buildings. Uh, you know, they didn't have any windows in yet so you could hear everything. So y you want to think about midday of people are listening and hopefully they're listening a little bit longer than the short period of time that we talked about in other lessons. But generally speaking, um, something to consider is, depending on your radio station, you might want to tone it down just a tad. You know, not always, you have to really figure your situation. If you're a CHR, you might want to tune, you know, tone it down just a tad, um, you know, back off the, you know, the heavy rap a little bit or other stuff. Um, if you are a rock station, you might want to tone it down by leaning into classic rock a little bit more, more gold. If you're an AC, you might want to, although ACs are tons of gold already, you know, pretty much you know, all day long and all night long, you might want to add a little bit more gold in. Let's say hypothetically you're playing three or four currents an hour in, you know, in the drives and maybe at night. Maybe you might want to knock that down to just, you know, one or two currents for midday. Um, in some way, you want to say, midday, I want to try for a little bit more listening. So toning down the amount of loudness, if you will, or toning down the amount of currents and lean more super familiar, that's usually something that you'd want to be thinking about for midday. Afternoon drive tends to end up being usually, you know, the way you'd set up afternoon drive, you'd sort of leave it that way. You could actually think of some other things depending on your market. Now, this is something that used to be done in North America. It's really not done anymore because there's so much inner internet prevalence and phones and every streaming and all of that sort of stuff that this really doesn't make any sense. What I'm about to tell you, 
but it might if you're in a, you know, if you're maybe somewhere in Asia or India or some other place where public broadcasting, and when I mean by public, I mean like, uh, you know, companies own it, not the government, um, you know, and they're free to do whatever format they want, it may be somewhat new. Like in North America, you know, commercial stations have been around for, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 years, where a lot of parts in Europe and uh, in Asia, maybe it's only been 15, 20 years. So you might be in a situation where this fits you. And you would know that by maybe looking at your ratings and going, wow, I have a lot of teens. I have a pretty decent amount of teens listening to my station or listening to the market. They're still on the radio. They haven't gone like in North America and other places. And one of the things that uh, come to mind for doing that is, um, is you'd, you'd think about when does school get out? What time is that? When does high school let out? When does grade school let out? When are the kids going to be home and commandeer the radio away from their parents uh, if they actually get home and listen to the radio? And you might want to start cranking up the radio station, let's just say at 4 o'clock or 3.30 because school gets out at 3. School gets out at 3, you start cranking it up at a quarter after 3. That type of thinking. Um, there was another thing that I used to do. It was just me, though. And uh, I thought it was, you know, I thought it worked out really well, but ultimately I don't really know. And I don't remember if I mentioned it on any of the lessons or not, but when I got to CKLW in, uh, in Detroit and I was doing afternoon drive, I was the PD of my show, okay? Um, because there were no computers at that point. So I would pick the music according to the format. So I would follow format and I would pick, you know, I would pick the music you know, as if I'm on, a, I'm on a music master and I'm onlining it one song by one song by one song. That's sort of what it, what it was in today's terms. But when I hit roughly four o'clock in the afternoon on afternoon drive, four to about six o'clock, for those two hours, I played no slow songs, unless they were in the top 10. If they came up in the top 10 because I had to play them, I would play them. If not, I would ignore them. So when you're driving home at five o'clock in the afternoon, when I was on the air in, in, you know, in Detroit at that point, I was just, I mean, you know, the, the music is going like this because it, it seemed like to me, and it was just in my head, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it seemed like to me that if you're sitting you know, on, in Detroit on I-94 and it's rush hour and the cars are choo 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 choo, you know, they're weaving in and out and you're sort of crawling and you're stop, start, stop, start, start, start. You're super hyper. And I wanted to match that with the music. So, you know, it was like, you know, Billy Idol, and, you know, uh, just cranking along with really fast songs. And I had huge shares in the afternoon. Um, you know, when I started doing that, the ratings really, you know, jumped considerably and noticeably. Hume too. So again, I don't know if that was coincidence, but it's just something to think about. So, you know, that would be afternoon drive. Let's move to nights. I'm going to save mornings for last. Let's move to nights. And um, I, I think you can consider this in most markets, okay? And this is going to be a hard thing to take, but I'm going to say it anyway because you know, I don't have to worry about what anybody thinks about what I'm saying. It's my course. I can say whatever I want. Typically on most radio stations in this day and age, particularly in smaller markets, at 9 o'clock you have no one listening. Okay? You're done. It's over with. It's a dead, it's a dead zone. Unless, unless you have something that's larger than life there. Like you might have Delilah on, you know, on your station. You might have John Tesh. You might have some other syndicated shows that are really, really good and they're unique and they're different. If not, you're going to have to man, you're at, well, if not, you're going to have to give up and just not care about nights really, you know, and make it as cheap as humanly possible. Probably put nobody on, just run IDs and stuff like that. That's one way to go. Um, or you want to manufacture your own larger than life something. Um, I'm going to take an entire lesson to go through this, but um, I had many instances, I think I told you about one already with Alan Allman doing, you know, the, you know, the secret way of programming where he used lyrics and stuff when he was doing a pillow talk show in Detroit. And he had monster ratings, just dominated nights. And it was a huge plus for the radio station. Alan was larger than life. And you know, he was one of those things that just demanded attention. And most importantly, if you wanted to listen to a show like that, that was your only option. You had to make a conscious choice to listen. And that's what people did in droves. 
So you, you want to think in those terms for nights, at least I would, of putting something on that might actually mm, sort of break the mold of your radio station a little bit. You don't want to go too far because you don't want to really super confuse people of what your station is, but you, know, you can take it out to another level um, on something that is um, really uh, unique and people have to make a choice for. I'll give you, I'll give you a, sort of an easy example. Um, we actually did this in Cincinnati. We did it on the weekends. We didn't do it during the week, but could have done it during the week. I didn't need to because I also had like a pillow talk show uh, on that station that was doing really, really well. We called it Night Moves. But you could very easily have a soft rock AC radio station, a softer AC radio station, and then at 10 o'clock and then maybe move it down to 9 o'clock, maybe move it to 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock as it starts to pick up steam. But you could start at 10 o'clock and move into like two hours of go to sleep music with smooth jazz and AC. Mix smooth jazz along with, you know, R&B AC music. And it would probably sound, you know, it would probably be a pretty decent sounding show. And then again, unique, somebody's got to make a choice. If you start to get traction with it, make, move it to nine. More traction, move it to eight, move it to seven and that type of thing. So that's a thing which, you know, you want to be building for nights and it's a lot of music and probably you would just do two stop sets, just like, you know, what I was doing on those clocks, you know, 15 and 45. If you can get away with it, do one stop set. Maybe you're going to be running less commercials at night. Maybe you can only do like six minutes and do one, one big break. I mean, that would be awesome. And just considering breaks overall, um, I was showing you on the clocks two big breaks at roughly 15 and 45, five minutes and five minutes. A lot of stations also do three breaks in an hour. That's you know fairly normal on a lot of radio stations. And they'll do the first break somewhere, in, somewhere around 20, 22, that's the first break. And then the next break will be somewhere around 36, 35, 37, somewhere in there, usually after the 35 mark. And the next one will be somewhere around 50, 52. And um, you know, and you would put your promo probably somewhere around the 36, 37, but maybe you want it at the 20 break. Um, you know, nothing is cast in stone. I'm just saying those are generally, if you're a new PD and like, what do I do? That, that's usually kind of the, the easiest and the, maybe the smartest two ways to go. And now finally, let's go to mornings. And mornings is the tough one because man, there's a lot of considerations for a morning show if you're doing breaks here. And the first thing that comes up is, are you doing news or not? Are you doing one an hour and it's at the top of the hour? Are you doing one an hour and it's at the bottom of the hour? Are you doing two an hour and it's a top and bottom? And then how long are they? Are, do you have commercials in the newscast? In other words, let's just say somebody does, in this day and age, you're probably not gonna have a long cast, like you used to, you used to do five minutes of news. You know, unlikely now, maybe you get like two minutes. Although the market you're in, might actually be a good thing to do three, four, five minutes because you may be the only one on the dial. Maybe there's not an all news station. Maybe there's not a news talk station. Maybe you're the source of news in the morning. So you gotta you know, take in everything of what's going on in your market. But let's just say there's a lot of stations and there are news stations and news talk stations. So you might wanna just do two minutes of news, do a commercial, come back with the weather, goodbye. You know, and then back to the morning show. So that may be what you wanna do either at the top or at the bottom or both, or, you know, not out of the realm for you to do it at 20 or 40 or anywhere you want to do it. You can put it at 45. It's your call. It's your radio station. And you might want to get away, get away from everybody else's news where they do it. You might want to do it in a different area. That then falls to traffic. Do you have traffic? More than likely you do. Here's one of those things that nobody ever tells you. Unless you're a news station or a news talk radio station, Usually the only reason that traffic is on your radio station is to make money off the traffic tags. Because typically somebody does 30 seconds of traffic, maybe they'll do 40 seconds of traffic, unlikely to do a minute, probably won't go out that long. 30 seconds of traffic in a major city tells you pretty much nothing. It really does. It's pretty much worthless. The only reason there it's there is as an excuse to run the 10 second tag at the end so the station can make money because they make a huge amount of money off of traffic tags. So probably you're gonna have, if you have traffic, you're gonna have a minimum probably of four traffic reports in an hour. It might be, again, if you had news, it might be at the you know top and bottom of the hour along with the news, and then another, another two of them at 15 and 45, somewhere like that, if that's where your breaks are. 
or you might have more. So it might be one at the top of the hour in the news. 10 minutes later, there's a break and there's traffic there. And then somewhere around 22, there's another break with traffic bottom of the hour, maybe news, maybe not with traffic or just traffic as you, you know, whip through. And then uh, again, somewhere around 40 and then somewhere around 50 with breaks. Because one of the considerations would be in this day and age, I, I would certainly consider this um, big time with an AC radio station and absolutely a CHR at this moment. And a lot of stations do this. Um, and the reasoning is very sound. Right now, everybody gets their news pretty much, you know, they'll either, they'll catch it at TV a little bit if they happen to be watching TV at night, but they're getting it off the internet. If, you know, they know, already know, they woke up and already know what the weather is. They probably already know what the traffic is. They're getting that off an app or Waze, or they're just assuming Waze is gonna tell them how to get there and they don't even care about the traffic. They just know when they get in their car, turn on Waze, Waze is gonna tell them the best way to get there. Your traffic is irrelevant really to them, okay? Um, and in a way, news is sort of irrelevant too, but if you had a more than one person morning show, you could do it with one, but definitely easier with two or three people on the morning show, it would be really neat to, to, to go on and say, you know, at some particular time, same time, every single hour, so maybe it's, maybe it's at the first break at 10 after, and it's a short commercial break, but it's a longer break because you're sort of doing the news and it's, uh, hey, Jamie, what's going on? Let's find out what's going on today. And then you just sort of roll into the news and the two or three people literally talk about it. One person brings up the story, gives you the facts, and then maybe there's a little bit of talking about it, uh, either funny or not funny, depending if you can get away with funny on the story. Um, and, you know, like right now, if it's, you know, what's going on in Afghanistan, you wouldn't want to be doing funny stuff with it, but you go through it and maybe you talk about it and maybe you say something, you know, oh my God, you know, it's, it's terrible what's going on there. You know, I hope everything works out okay. And then you move to the next story. Do that for maybe like a minute and a half, then move into the commercials and move on with the show. And for all of those, um, day parts where you put the music, you know, and how you set up the clocks musically, that's, I can't tell you that. There's just no way to tell you that. I mean, that's really pretty much all on your own. The only thing I would say is you might want to keep considering what I was doing with the clocks where, you know, you want to be using power gold, super gold, you know, at least a couple an hour, maybe more. And, you know, you want to lean on your, on your, on your hit music and have a relatively sort of tight list overall for your universe and for your current music, okay? So you wanna be bearing that in mind. One other last thing, I've seen this on many radio stations. Um, it was also, I first encountered it with uh, CKLW when I first got there as a jock, you know, a monster radio station, big, big, big numbers. And it surprised me because I was doing afternoon drive and I could play all of the music, all the current music. The morning guy was not allowed to, to go past song number 20. So he only played the top 20, where I was playing the top 30, top 35, plus other songs. So they took his list of what I was playing and condensed it down to, you're only playing the top 10 and then a few other songs. No new songs, like, you know, no new added songs. You know, he didn't play any of that. So the morning show was really tightened down, super familiar stuff, just like I was talking about midday. Uh, midday would be certainly more open than the morning show, but it was almost like super tight mornings opened up a little bit more for midday, but still reasonably tight. And then afternoons, you know, full open. And then nights would also at that time, CHR, top 40 station was wide open. Um, but you might have a different format, AC country or something, where you might want to again do something that is unique. Now, something to consider if you are a PD, because I've encountered this many, many times, and um, you know, I think this is uh, hopefully really good advice for you. If you're offered a new job as a PD and, uh, and it's in a different market, because it becomes easier to do this in a different market, and you go into the market and you know, they put you up in a hotel and you listen to the market for a few days, and you can even do it ahead of time nowadays because of the internet, you can actually you know, basically monitor all the stations that you're gonna compete with in the market and you listen to them and, and a station starts to form in your head of, okay, this is what I think we need to do. And then you really bear down on your own radio station, okay? You really listen to it and you super listen to it critically. You listen to the morning show, what do I need to fix? What doesn't sound right? What seems weird to me? Then you, midday, then afternoons, then nights. I would 
begin, you really need to do this, I would, you know, maybe take a dictation uh, little, little thing uh, or just do it into your phone, into the voice memos or write it down. Write down all of your impressions, dictate all of your impressions as you're listening to the radio station. New, cold, blank, because what's hitting you is probably what's hitting an average person, okay? Because here's what happens. If you don't do that, you're gonna get to the radio station, you're gonna meet the people that live, you know, that, that work there and you know live there and all that sort of stuff. But they may be one of the people that, oh man, you know what, they're not all that good on the air, but they're great, they're a great person. And so you start to lean toward not fixing them or not letting them go or not doing what you need to do. And then the longer that goes on, the more you get used to hearing the radio station. So let me put it sort of in terms of like, you want a radio station to be like this, okay? This level. And it's down here, it's this level, okay? You, you do your mental notes trying to get it to here. When you start to work, it's here. The more, you know, and you're trying to raise it up, but the more you, the more you keep listening to the radio station, your initial level will start to come down because you get used to mediocrity. The more you listen to something that's average, the more it becomes the norm, where when you first listen to a radio station out of the gate, you'll hear that, wow, that's average, that sucks. I really want this to be infinitely better. And something that goes along with that, um, which I'm gonna give you sort of the opposite end of the scale, I actually have gone into situations, I can think of three of them. One was I went into Montreal and, uh, and I listened to the radio station. I knew exactly what to do with the radio station, but I was listening to the morning show and it was a morning show that had been a heritage morning show that came over from a rock radio station and they were successful. And as I listened to them, they, they did things that I had never heard really on the radio. They, you know, they'd start shaking the papers and uh, you know, you'd hear the papers rattling. You'd hear somebody being way off, off mic on the other side of the room. Um, you know, it was very, very lax and whatever. And, and I didn't know what to do with it. I, I truly didn't know what to do with it. And I had a sort of a similar situation with the station in general um, when I went into Calgary because it was a rock radio station and I had never done rock. And I, again, just recently I had a similar thing when I got asked to do a jazz station and I knew nothing about jazz. So when you go into a station, it's great to, again, it was the same what I did. I wrote down all my impressions. I kept track of all my impressions for all of those stations, but in the areas that I knew I need to fix this and I can fix this because that has nothing to do with the overall image or overall feel or overall, you know, joie de vie of the radio station itself, I can fix it. But then there's things where it's like, man, I don't want to touch this because I don't understand this. I don't understand rock. I wasn't on the rock bus. Um, you know, the, the way uh, Fred Jacobs you know, used to explain it, you're either on the rock bus or you're not on the rock bus, you know, ages ago when he used to put out ads for classic rock uh, PDs. I always thought that was really brilliant of him. I instantly knew what he, what he meant because I had never been on the rock bus. You know, I grew up with Top 40 and that's what I liked, Top 40. So rock was new to me. Jazz was a totally different world to me. And the CHR that we were building in, in Montreal, that wasn't new to me at all. So I could fix everything except the morning show because I didn't really understand it. What I knew were two things. I knew one was it sounded really odd to me and, and weird. And that was number one. And number two was that they had good ratings. They weren't massive ratings, but they were really good ratings. It was like, I don't want to mess with these. I don't want to wreck this stuff by doing something that I don't understand. So, you know, I, I kept my notes of what I think would be good for them to do. And ultimately, little by little, which was great because the, the, the morning guy, um, there was, you know, uh, uh, two people, uh, Terry and Ted, uh, Ted Bird and uh, Terry DeMonte, you know, to, it was a great, great show ultimately that I finally understood it. But Terry used to come in all the time and he'd come, you know, after the show, he'd sit in my office. So, hey, what do you think? You know, because I'm new and he's trying to feel me out and go like, great show, Terry. You know, everything's, you know, fantastic. And I love, you know, try to pick out the good bits. It's like, okay, I like that. Great bit when you did the so-and-so, really loved it. That person on the phone was, was funny. It was awesome the way you handle this. Um, they used to do this bit, uh, which was called uh, revisionist history, where they would go back in history and have it really screwed up. And it was super funny. You know, and I'd say that was fantastic. 
I didn't want to say anything negative about the show because I, I didn't really understand what they were doing because it was so different to me. Only around the two, two and a half month mark, maybe even the three month mark, you know, after I'd been there, one morning I get up and it's like, you know what, I finally get this show. They are totally a reflection of, of the island of Montreal. The island of Montreal is predominantly, um, it, it's sort of like split because, you know, it looks like, you know, one, you know, a big strip and, you know, if you take it for the West End, it's primarily English. And if you take it toward the East End, it's very, very French. And then the suburbs all around are, are a mix, although they're mostly French because, you know, the city's probably, I don't know, I'm just guessing here, two thirds, one third French to English. Okay. So, but the more I listened to Terry and Ted's show, and felt and I understood the city more because I had been living there more after two months of living there and walking around and driving around and getting a feel for the city itself. It became really apparent to me that what they were doing was a dead on reflection of the city of Montreal. They were the city and that's why they were doing so well. And I was like, okay, I got it. So then now when Terry would come in and go, Hey, what do you think? I could then say, you know, I really loved so. You know what would be kind of good? What do you think about this, Ter? And then that turned into why don't we do this? How about this? So he'd come to an idea like, great idea. Because you know he he wanted to raise the level of the show too. So as we did that, the show got even stronger and stronger. So you know, pretty soon, pretty fairly quickly. I mean, we're just hammering everybody. But the moral of what I'm trying to say is, if you don't know what you're doing. Don't be like, oh, I know everything and wade into it. Step back and go, man, I haven't a clue what this is. I know how, you know, I know all of these things and I'll fix all of these things. But for this, not a clue. I am not touching this until I understand what's going on. And then I'll wade into it and then wade into it. Bear that all in mind. So that's it for today's lesson. Uh, boy, I'm sweltering in here because it's like 90 degrees outside and I can't turn the air on because you're going to be getting a rumble off the mic above me. And it'll be like, it was like, uh, meanwhile, I'm sweating. I don't know if you can see it kind of running down. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for the lesson today. I hope you liked it. As always, subscribe and hit the like button. Like button, when you hit a like button, it has a huge impact on YouTube as to how they serve this channel up to other people. So it really helps more than anything. So if you feel comfortable doing it, hit the like button. I super appreciate it. And like I mentioned earlier in the lesson, if you have a question, send me an email. I would love to get, you know, 10 different questions and I'll make a couple uh, lessons out of those, you know, five and five and or more. And, um, you know, because we're getting into, we're getting into a part of the course where it's sort of the easy nuts and bolts stuff is I've sort of covered it. There's some more stuff to do, but for the most part, I mean, I've covered a lot of it and now we're getting into sort of esoteric type things where a lot of it is feel and it becomes so much harder to teach straight up. It's a lot easier to talk about it. So somebody, you know, Hey, how do you handle this? Okay. Well, you might want to think about this, 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 in this instance, I did whatever. In that instance, I did something opposite. So you, you know, you get a hearing of it that way, kind of just like this lesson, you know, a little bit, but maybe even a little bit more detailed. So if you have questions, by all means, email them. And that is it for today's lesson. So I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. See ya.